Welcome to Senate Education, Friday, February 18th. A little bit of a late start. We had a, a cancellation from uh, Treasurer Pierce, who is having some uh, technology issues. We have rescheduled or we're working to reschedule her for Tuesday. Really appreciate Mr. James coming in. Uh, Brad, thanks for being with us and for, for jumping in. Uh, to bring those watching as well as colleagues uh, back to the conversation, we have a letter that we have um, getting close to finalizing. Uh, the, the core of it is there uh, and a memo to finance with a recommendation around how uh, e English language learner, learning students, ELL students would be funded in the state. And Mr. James, you've probably seen that we have landed or are leaning toward a hybrid model. And some questions were raised by uh, a number of senators on this committee as to what the impact would be on taxes. So, and what would that look like? And so uh, we have you here to talk to us a little bit about that. Sure. No problem. I'm uh, Brad James, Agency of Education. Um, and first of all, I apologize because this came to me two days ago and I completely missed that email. Thank you for following up, Senator Campion. No, no problem at all. We know everybody's busy. Um, so so what, what the question was asked, um, what's the impact going to be? And so if, if, if you use these two, these two grants, in other words, you set it up so that you were looking at using all the recommended weights plus an ELL weight of 2.49, and then you were saying, then the question was, what if you get, I believe you call them mini grants to those districts that had 25 or fewer ELL students. So what I did was I calculated what the tax rates would be using all the weights, including the ELL weight of 2.49. And that's the, that's the second column there that has the tax rates in it. Then I calculated what it would be by reducing education spending by $25,000 um, Per, per student for every, or not, not per student, but, but for any district that had 25 or fewer students. And that's the second column. That, and that's the, what I'm showing you, I figured it would probably be easier to say is just see what the decrease would be. Um, so if, if we're looking at, does everybody have this handout that I, that I put up there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. I just want to make sure if it, it's in, on our website, uh, and I believe Daphne sent it around to senators. So I think people have had it for a couple of days, or at least a day now. Okay. Great. So if I just look at the very first one, then it's Addison Central. Um, mm -hmm. If I if I work my way across, um, obviously in Addison County, they have 15 ELL students. That's the very first column. And they, again, these are FY20 numbers. This is all predicated and based on FY20 data. So it's anything will change in the future. Um, but the rate the rate they would have with just having all the weights would be a dollar sixty seven nine. Okay. Then if I took if I Re went back and recalculated by reducing their education spending by $25,000 because that's that's what that grant would do, would be their education spending. Their tax rate decreases by about 0 0.001 pennies. So, you know, a tenth of a penny is what it decreases. At 50,000, it's it's that last column, 0 0.003. The reason it's not double is because there's actually an extra digit in there. I'm only showing you three digits instead of four in difference. So th that's what we're looking that's what we're looking at here. If there is no change at all, one of two things is happening. Either the district has no ELL students or they have more than 25 ELL students. And I think there are seven or nine, I think it was seven. Oh, nine, I take it back, I have it here on the sheet of paper. There were nine districts that had more than 25 ELL students and they account for 1,485 students out of a total of 1,780, those nine districts. And so the other 47 districts that had ELL students accounted for 295 in total, just so you have some semblance of what's happening. So the idea here, from what I interpreted from reading the letter from Senator Campion, and I guess the rest of you all, was that <clears throat> having these mini grants would then allow those districts that do not have a significant number of students, ELL students, to be able to at least hire a part-time person to work with these students. And that seems like this will do it. And it's a very interesting idea. I like it, frankly, in my opinion. But um, so that that's kind of that's kind of where it stands, what you're looking at here. Um, and again, I'm just showing you the differences. If you'd rather see the tax rates themselves, I can show you that. If you'd rather see the four districts of tax rates, I can do that, whatever you prefer. Senator Persley. Yeah, I guess what I was thinking we were going to see is the 
the change of the tax rate because of the 2.49 weight. That's already, so I can compare it to something, you know, past, like a change. So this is just what it would be if in 2020, had we had this 2.49. So, so we'd have to look at some other chart that had us what the actual. Like, if, if, if you would like to put more, another year or something in there, I'd be happy to. I mean, if, if you want to put, here's what they would have been, here's what they were in FY20, so that's where we started from. You know, no, no, no way to more or less current law with all those caveats as to what we did. But if you want to put in that FY20, and then I could certainly show you that. I mean, it's a question of what you want to do. I wasn't 100% sure um, because I, we were racing around the end of the day. Right. I think it would be interesting to see that. But then uh, as far as this chart goes, I'm, I'm having trouble visualizing why the rate would go down with the mini grants because when they're you know, their education spending is going up, but they're getting that money. It's not, no, edu education spending doesn't include any of the grants, right? So okay, that, that, that's right. The, the initial column did not include the grants. So the education spending was actually higher in those. If you were one of those districts that had you know, that, that cohort of students, then your education spending decreased by either twenty five dollars or $50,000 for which scenario. So I was trying to bracket it is what I was doing. I see. Right. But in a way, it's just kind of, it's going down, but. It's not, it's not huge, it's, it's not significantly going down. And it's going down from the, from, from what could already be going up from the, from all the other weights. So, I mean, it, it will, it, if it will, it will not take me long to add more information into this because the work was actually getting those, those deltas that you're seeing there. That, that's what the work was. Um, if you, I, I can, I mean, tell me, tell me what you want to see and I can, I'll, I'll put it together. I mean, if you want to add one more column, which is, which is what, here's what the FY 20 rates are as your, as your base comparison. And, and, and you know, so I, I would have, I guess I'd have EO accounts and that base comparison and then, then th the next three columns. Is that, is that what you prefer to see? I mean, it's, it's the committee's decision. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. Just let me know. Yeah, I think that would be, would be interesting to see. Yeah. Okay. So you'll add that, Brad, uh, Senator Lyons? Yeah, I was going to, I was going to actually suggest that, but so that's helpful um, it, because then that'll help us understand what the possible concerns might be out at the local level, but there's no way of knowing at this point what the, um, what schools have for the fewer students that they have. So they have 25 or less, or they have the 33 or the 50. We don't know what provisions they currently have in place. So there's, you know, we can't tell what the overall effect will be. We might know what the monetary effect is, a tax effect, but we won't know what the perception of help effect will be. You know, so which is important because we're we're trying to help schools that have um, ELL students. So just an observation. This, so I, I think this is very helpful overall. Uh, yeah, Senator Perslick. In, the, in these grants, as coming out where, where they do in the, in the formula, education formula, they, they would have an impact on everybody else's tax rate. E slightly, yes, they would. It's not uh, it, not it, a big it, number. Compared no, to not 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 people. a big number. I mean, the, the the total here, if you did the fifty thousand, the total was just over 2 million, I think, to 2.3 million. I'm going from the memory now. Yeah. Um, it, it, was, it wasn't huge. Um, and so that, that would be, that would maybe be a, a tenth of a penny on everybody's tax rate, so, some, somewhere in that range. It would not be a, it would not be a big, terribly noticeable thing. It, it would be there unquestionably. And that means it would impact these folks too, who are also going down right. because it would impact everybody uniformly. But, but you're, you're correct. It would, it would have an impact because it would change the education spending. Um, actually, what it would do, well, you still have to raise the money because you still have to pay, you have still have to get the grant. 
So it may not change it much at all now that I think about it and put the pieces together because you're reducing education spending, but you're putting in that grant as another line of the ed fund, you know, for all practical purposes. So it should probably wash. And that money is well washed for these districts. I, I think wash, I think wash for everybody. These these guys, well, these guys have got a, a bit of a break. It would depend on where their property values are. You know, now now we're really getting the weeds. So that, that could impact the yield slightly, but I think it would be minimal. And I can't remember, I guess I have to go back and look at what we were thinking. I remember the 25,000 or 50,000, but I thought at one point we maybe, and maybe it was just some conversation I had with Senator Hardy or something about whether we wanted to have do two different tiers of how many students they have. You know, this is just the 25. I, I wondered if the grant should be stepped more than just one step, have like Zero to 20, 20 to 50, or something like that. But. It, it, it could mathematically, it could certainly work. Um, it, it, it's a policy decision for you all to make. Um, it, you could you could do it as a sliding scale, which would take a little more work, but you could do a sliding scale going going down. Um, so it's it's you know it's kind of whatever you chose to do, but you could certainly break it into two steps, three steps, whatever you chose, so chose. Let's put it out that way. And then, uh, Senator Perslick, are you okay right now? Okay, so this recommendation, you know, this is where we land. We send it down to finance. And of course, this is going to be uh, put in with a lot of other weights. All right. And so tell us a little bit about that and what one might anticipate. Well, I, th I think what you're seeing here in that very first column is all the weights together that are, that are recommended by the task force, including the ELL weights. So, so that's where the tax rates, where the tax rates would start. Right. And then, and then it, as, as again, as I'm showing, I think what you're, you're seeing is you're going to see those minor decreases due to whatever you choose the grant to be. As I, as I said, I was basically bracketing it based on what you're asking. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, so I think, I think you're pretty much seeing what's going to happen okay. Because, okay. because nobody's really talked about changing the other, any of the other weights because the weights right. are coming as a package. Right. So, right. so I think, I think, I think this is pretty much what would happen right, right here. Just to clarify, those weights were weights that were in the study, the COVID study. Thank you. Senator Lyons? Well, I was just looking down the list, and um, I mean, it, it looks like, for example, if you look at Craftsbury, it goes from 0 0.013 to 0 0.026, it doubles. Um, so it's a variable. That's all. It, and a lot of center lines has to do with the size of the district because, yeah. because the smaller the district, the more of an impact that twenty five or $50,000 is going to have on their education. Spending. But isn't that yeah. consistent? That, that's kind of consistent with what we've been wanting to do in terms of supporting our rural small yes. schools. Yes. Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. Senator Persler. Yeah, I was just looking at I guess a, a thing that I had written, I guess we'll have to look at what, do we have this, the letter that we drafted somewhere on our website? I guess I could to look at that, but the way I had it was one to 10 students, 25,000, 11 to 25 students, 50,000. So once you get over 10, 10 students, you get the 50, but if you're under 10, if you're 10 and under, you get the 25. I, I can I can easily do that. Um, it, it'll take a little bit of time, and I don't know if if you're trying to get a letter out today. I I don't mean to jump into and tell you guys what to do. Um, it, it, I'm not sure I'd be able to get it done in an adequate format today. I I don't think we need to see like it's pretty clear from what you've done what the impact would be, would be like the, the difference on the on the tax rates for the towns is minuscule. I think more important is like what what the impact is overall dollar wise and what the overall weights impact i think that the, if you had the 2020 tax rate for those towns and then that people could actually see the difference that's where everybody's focus is going to be the fact that some districts changed one to three tenths of a cent because of the yellow grants probably won't get much attention after they see that other change 
Okay, so so so, so let, let let me ask you this then. Um, I'm trying I'm trying to keep it simple. You know, if, if you know, and I was impressed with how simple that one looked when I came out with it for yes. once. Um, I mean, I can always turn, change it to to landscape too. But what if what if I what if I ignored that column, the, the column that has the estimated tax rates of all the weights that I'm using as the base, and instead. I think this is what you're both, what you and Senator Lyons are saying. Put in, put in the FY twenty rates there, and then had the had the chain had the plus minus from that. Would, would is is that where you're kind of thinking it would it would be more beneficial? The plus or minus of all the weights, including the ELL weight. Plus, plus the grants, or, or, do you, or I mean, I, we we could do I could do I could do the FY twenty column. And then I could do plus minus all the grant all the weights, no, no grants, and then all the weights 25,000, all the weights 50,000. Yeah, that would be fine. Okay. It's okay with Senator Pursley. Okay, Senator Lyons, does that work for you? Yeah, okay. I just asked Daphne to send the letter uh, around to everyone so it's fresh in your emails. Uh, so it hopefully it will be there soon. Um, uh, I, I can probably, I can probably have that done within 30 minutes at the most. If, if you would, I, I, that, that would be terrific. That would be terrific. And we can have you, uh, have you back. Okay. All right. Anything else before I jump off then? Uh, just giving people an opportunity. Daphne is sending, just sent around uh, a dr the draft of the letter. I just want to pull it up um, and make sure, give everyone an opportunity to take a look. Just to make sure they don't have any additional questions. Uh, I mean, when I say draft, this is draft because I do want to add some real language to this, give people some context for our discussions, uh, how we got there, et cetera. And it's still, uh, it just looks sloppy to me. Uh, Senator Perchlick. Yeah, I, I, I like the idea of, of being more precise on the, on the mini grants. I mean, this is 25 to 50,000 range. But we could be more specific if we have the time to say, you know, there's, and I'm not sure what the right number is. I'd have to talk yeah. to the schools or AOE or, you know, those. At what point does a half time person can handle like how many students? And then at what point do they need a full time person kind of thing? But we could say, okay, 20, I, instead of just telling finance 25 to 50 range and like, one to 10, 25, 10 to whatever number, 25, 50 would be, would be a, a more precise that I feel better about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And who do you think would be best to determine that? In um, terms of witnesses? Ideally it would be whoever deals with ELL at AOE. There, there, we've, I think there's a person, I don't think it's also just- He, he, he retired. <laughs> Retired? You retired. retired. Okay. Yeah. So we're 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 down we're down a position right there. Okay. Um, so it, it yeah, I mean, and I think I don't I don't know I don't know as we know the answer to it. Um, I think it might be more of a question for folks in the field and the school district themselves as to what they that's think. Right. I because I I, I, I I truly have no idea, but I would I would guess they would probably have a better idea than we would. I mean, I would. Uh, Libby Bonesteel, Ben Bonesteel might have an idea because I think yeah. they're. I don't, not saying that to, to be prevent. Uh, what did I, I get that word wrong last time? <laughs> um, just because, you know, I'm in, in her district, but, or she's in my district, depending on how you look at it, is that they, their ELL students fluctuate because of you know, people coming and going from national life. So I think they, not too distant past, they've had under 25, and now this year they have over 50. So, she might be able to provide kind of the difference, what it needs, or we could, if there's other districts like that, that have had a range or that have experienced. Cause I think Winooski has whatever 500 might not be as helpful for somebody that's in the range that we're talking about. Would you mind reaching out to the superintendent Bonesteel 
Yeah, I can do that right now. Uh, that would be great if we could get that uh, those kind of numbers and um, Senator Lyons. I thought we did. I thought we got some testimony, a little bit of testimony about that, but I don't remember who who gave it. Maybe it was Libby Bone Steel. It might have been but, someone from Winooski, but go ahead, please. It could have been Winooski. Yeah, they were talking about what happens when you add and subtract, but. Um, I, I, my, uh, I guess my question is more about is about the memorandum and the draft, um, the draftness of it. <laughs> uh, so I was not here when it changed that it has changed a little bit. I, th I think I was absent when that happened. But my, my question is, are we going to put together any language regarding um, best practice uh, for ELL students, not necessarily to send to finance, but if it, but if it's going to be included in the bill, we're going to have to put it somewhere. So, uh, and direction around what I guess the ELL person is gone, but so I how do we? That this is where we would be working with probes on this piece personally to get that language ready for them. It seemed to me. Okay. More of a, a better connection, but I'm I'm open. Well, I was just thinking that whatever language is put forward, we ought to be um, putting it together, and then Absolutely. yeah. So that's all. I was what not a big deal. No, I think no, it's, <clears throat> it's a good reminder. And I suspect whatever we end up doing, if we change the mini grants, I, listen, that that also could end up being changed down the hall. Uh, but I think, you know, um, we can give them greater specificity, uh, yeah, you know, or some, some real policy behind it, the, the better. You know, well, I noticed the last sentence there is we'd be, uh, that we could provide you with related policy language if needed. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's okay, but Um, uh, the last sentence, tell me where you're looking. On the draft at the yep. very bottom where we're thanking them for consideration. Yep. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. That one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not clear. Yeah, it's, it's still yeah. sloppy. It's just uh, there needs to be more text in general here, you know, kind of pulling yeah. things apart a little bit. And I do have some, some text a little bit that I'll share orally with the committee when, when Jim is in. And Jim's going to work with us a little bit this afternoon to see if we can get to a point where it's, it's a little bit more solid. Okay. okay. Uh, Senator Hooker, question. A favor from Brad. Yeah. <laughs> you could... Could you just give a couple of examples of what this would look like for a person's property tax? You know, the changes as you go through just a couple of, you know, when you when you do the the run of the other numbers of what they pay now, what they're paying at this point and what they would be paying with the new weights and the grants and the difference that it would mean to a, an average um, property tax payment. Yeah, I, I'm sure. I mean, it, a, a penny, essentially a penny on a $100,000 house is about $10 in tax, um, just, just roughly, you know. And so we're, we're in a lot of cases, we're talking about 0 0.001 or 0 0.002. So we're really talking about a couple dollars per hundred per hundred thousand dollar value so you figure i have no idea what an average house is worth these days but you figure but if you figure that four hundred thousand dollars you say you say four hundred thousand dollars that's you know it's maybe roughly ten dollars okay but but i but I, I will i will do some more calculations so that you can see it instead okay instead of listening to me <laughs> okay uh senator uh Lyons, when I just want to go back to your comment, uh, if you don't mind, about the letter itself for a moment, um, just to make sure I'm on the same page uh, with what I'm thinking. Tell me what sorts of things you're thinking about as it relates to related policy language. What what are the kind of things that are coming to your mind? Yeah, good question. I, <clears throat> I think we had talked about how 
to put some uh, guidelines in about what it means to work with ELL students and the extent to which it might go beyond simple English language instruction to other areas of uh, support for kids. So, yeah. you know, and it, it's, it's a lot more difficult to engage community when you have one student. Maybe it's easier, I don't know, but mm -hmm. some of the concepts that we've heard about from the schools that have been doing this for a while, you know, they're all over the state. Yeah. So, so that's all I was thinking about. And, no, that's, and maybe, I, that's really helpful. I really appreciate that. Yeah, uh, that, that's great. And I think we might be able to plug some of that in with Jim when he comes in this afternoon. And then maybe even I can, you know, kind of <clears throat> committees comfortable, share it with some superintendents and others and try to tighten it up a little bit over the weekend um, and get back to folks. But that's, that's, that's really helpful. Yeah, that that's all it was. And, comprehensive. What yeah, it you know, be, we could go on. Fact. We could go on forever with that one. Um, yeah. But we don't. It's more of what's possible. What are the kind of guidelines? I suppose. Great. Yeah. And I'm just seeing that uh, Jim Demeray just wrote that he's available, so he'll come in now. Uh, my God, look at that. Can I just comment on? I don't um, know if that um, was a. What's that? Please go ahead. I just um, dovetailed to what Senator Lyon said, or go back to what she said before about best practice, and maybe that's some of the language that we want to include in this because people who have been in this for a long time, yeah, have things in place that they can certainly share, and and I know we talked about that when we talked about the the position at the agency and how that position may help to disseminate right. uh, the information that comes from best practices. Um, Mr. Demaray, thanks for joining us. Brad, do you want to uh, to leave for a little while? Yeah, I will and I'll, I'll let that know when I'm back. I, I mean, I don't mean that in any, like that's not, not <laughs> that does not mean for me to be, I'm not trying to be rude. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Brad. Yeah. That's what you were trying to say. No offense. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> you can listen to the tape later. We're not going to say anything bad about you. Uh, I'm used to it. <laughs> uh, you are. Jeez. Um, all right. So, uh, Mr. Demaray, thanks for being with us. Um, I, a couple of things as we look at this memorandum. I'm, I'm just going to first just throw this out aesthetically, and this isn't your job. I'm happy to do it in a in a Word document, but. It isn't, it, it's, it's crunched up. There are, and again, this isn't you, this is something I can do, or we can have, if you want to just communicate with the editors, it's crunched up, you know, they're, they're, the, the, uh, the, um, the margins aren't accurate, all that kind of thing. I think we just need to generally have editing tidied up. I also think we need some kind of introductory comment there that mentions that we've deliberated over the past several weeks on how to provide English language learners uh, with the necessary educational experience is the necessary funds, if you will, to support this very important work. It, I think it just needs something. I don't, and I'm looking, if others disagree, feel free to jump in. Uh, um, you know, this was, a, and I, you know, I could go on, this is a compromise that Senator Perchlick and Senator uh, um, uh, Hardy worked on. Um, I, I think it's good to put that in there. It, uh, two members from the task force, as well as both serving on the committees of jurisdiction. Uh, and this, you know, we'll, we'll get to the point where we have uh, a vote, but I'm, I'm, I think looking at what Brad just presented us with, I think we'll, we'll might be able to go uh, unanimously. And then at the, the bottom, uh, instead of, or in lieu of, I guess, the discuss with you and provide related policy language, I think what Senator Lyons mentioned before you got in, and then I'll turn it over to everyone else, uh, you know, for us to, to reference something around, um, you know, th these aren't the right words. This isn't something that just happens in the classroom. This is something, this is a uh, working with ELL students. Uh, it is um, full service isn't the, uh, it's, 
there needs to be a comprehensive approach. So students are successful, families are successful. Uh, there are things that are gonna happen outside of the classroom. There are gonna be things aside from just teaching English, but you know, uh, cultural kinds of things making uh, also, I don't know, Center Alliance, you're- uh, you're you know, you've, No, you've said it, you know, that it, for some of the schools, there's some integration within the community and support services to help kids adjust to a, a new culture and that, that that happens in the school and then the school some of the schools have provided some outreach to families and community organizations so you know i'm not clear we can state fully what comp, you know constitutes best practice but certainly there are some components other than teaching english so having yeah. those broader support services that better integrate the, the student into the their new uh, culture, uh, you know, and it could be it could be considered school culture, but sometimes it extends to the family. We saw that too, where the families are helped uh, in teaching the language or in learning mm -hmm. how to vote. I mean, all of those things yeah. are so critical. And uh, that is why we've we've moved in this that language to support why the categorical grants in smaller populated communities are essential. Yes, it, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Senator Hooker. Uh, I liked what you said about comprehensive. And then I liked what um, Senator Lyon said about including, you know, family and stuff. It looks like a holistic approach. And I don't know if that's a, a Ooh, I like that. that. My, my mm. Yep. Good word, Senator. <laughs> Holistic is great. Senator Perslick, how are you feeling about this in terms of what we would be, uh, you and Senator Hooker both served on the task force, you worked on this compromise. How, how does where we're heading sound to you in terms of what we would share with finance? I don't think it's, I think it's good. And it allows us to, to move forward and, and help, you know, at least hopefully, help these students out, help the schools out throughout the, the state that need the other weights, and then collect the data to move forward and to keep, keep up. My main interest at this point is that, well, one, we get this passed, but two, we keep up on it every year and not yeah. say like, okay, we did that, and then 20 years later realize we're all out right. of whack again. Right. Mr. Demaret, questions or comments from you? I, I do have questions. Uh, yeah. So I, I understand that the open, you want the format to be different. Um, this has been through editing, but I can certainly make it. No, I know you mentioned different. that and it's. I'm, uh, ha I'm happy to have changed yeah. the format and make it a bit different. Um, the opening I, I got, I think I got what you want in the opening. Um, you want more of a description of your deliberations, taking input from task force members. And then you said at the end, you'd like to replace the end was something, but I'm not quite sure what that is. So what, what, what do you want to say at the end? So at the end, I would say, let me see if I jotted anything down here. Um, bear with me one second. Um, we were talking about the end being more of an opportunity to explain, well, in, well support the work above, you know, the decisions above. In other words, um, we recognize that English language learners, it's, as I think uh, Senator Hooker said, it's, you need a, a holistic, comprehensive approach to yep. making certain that these students are successful and their success is essential to, to all of us. I mean, these aren't exactly the right words. I'm just giving you the, the gist um, of what we're thinking. Uh, it's work that takes place not only in the classroom, but outside of the classroom. There's work with cultural liaisons. Um, there are cult, there, there's work to be done with other, um, uh, you know, agencies in state government, local government, uh, to make certain that, you know, the student and their family, uh, is, uh, is successful, if you will. Um, and, and having a categorical grant particularly I'd say in, in very low populated districts is, is, is essential 
in terms of achieving that success. Something that's where I'm at, but I'm looking okay. for others okay. to weigh in. Uh, anybody want to add to that, please? I mean, it's it's well, we can look at whatever you pull together, Senator Perchlick. No, okay. Senator Lyons, Senator Hooker. Um, just looking at something that might address or or point to being successfully integrated or successful integration into the, the whole community as opposed to, you know, just having classes at school. So I, I think the whole idea of becoming a, an integral part of the community um, might serve them well. Senator Campion, can I jump in? Oh, yes, yeah. Senator Terenzini. Yes, yeah, sorry, I don't have the raise my hand feature. Uh, I, I like the bill a lot. I think it's a nice compromise. I fully support it and look forward to voting on it. Great, terrific. Um, thanks for that. Senator Chittenden, you've, uh, anything from you at this point? I know you've, no, okay. Um, how's that feel, Jim? Does that give you enough to, to go on? Absolutely. Yep, let me take a stab at that and get this back to you. Okay. Uh, let's see, let me just look at the schedule for today. Um, we have Jay Nichols coming in at 2.30, then 2.45. Uh, we were going to do this with you at 3.30. Is it possible for you to bring language back to us at 3.30? Oh, sure, of course. Yep. All right, that'd be great. If you don't mind, uh, we can look at this language uh, that you're going to do right now at 3.30 when we were going to take up people waiting um, and maybe move it or, or close to it. We'll, we'll get close to it. Um, great. Anything else from anybody? Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Demaray, if you want to go now. Okay. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, we will see you take, soon. <laughs> see you soon. Uh, committee, we're going to, we have Mr. Nichols coming in uh, at 2.30. So uh, sorry for the uh, unevenness of the schedule. Um, we'll all remember this on election day for secretary with treasurer Pierce having canceled on us. Uh, but yeah, so why don't we come back at two 30.